What's up guys, Jade's Corner back here again for another episode of my Fantasy Fights video. And before I get into the video, I just have to let you guys know about 79% of you guys who watch these videos are not subscribed to the channel. So if you like these Fantasy, fight, fantasy Fights videos and you keep coming back to the channel for more, consider subscribing to the channel where you get up, where you get notified on me posting a new Fantasy Fights video every single week. And without further ado, Time to get into today's matchup, which will be the Oni from Team Wolf versus the Wild Hunt, or better known as the Ghost Riders from Team Wolf. So, who's coming out on top? Let's find out. So first we're going to start with the Oni. In Teen Wolf, the Oni are a species of supernatural demonic warriors who are so powerful that they are described as a force of, a force of nature that is meant to be endured rather than fought. Now we're going to get into the powers of the Oni. Now, Oni have, now the Oni have a wide variety of powers that are going to be useful within this fight against the Ghost Riders and let's get into them. So they have teleportation and so yeah, the Oni have the ability to teleport from one place to another through shadows. They have enhanced strength. The Oni, like most of most most other supernatural creatures, have enhanced physical strength. Their strength is much more enhanced than werewolves and even alpha werewolves, as we saw when the Oni absolutely bodied Alpha Scott, as well as Derek Hale and the Alpha Twins, as well as Isaac Leahy. They have the ability to self-scan. The Oni can perform a scan on any species of human or supernatural being. This process is used to identify any individual that has a dark or malevolent spirit attached to them. And the Oni perform the test by looking into the suspect's eyes in an almost ritualistic fashion. If the said individual is not possessed, they are marked by the Oni on, on their neck. Behind the left ear with the Japanese kanji Onor, which means self, and this is to the sus this is to the suspect that still themselves the process leaves the suspect incapacitated in a state of hypothermia which we saw multiple times with different characters throughout season three part two of teen wolf they also have the ability to phase and they have intangibility the oni can phase through solid matter they can also phase swords out of themselves which i think is really badass they have enhanced swordsmanship which gives them to skip the skill to wield swords masterfully and with uh, proficient skill they also have poison which is located in their swords and it's and their swords are laced with the deadly toxin that is capable of killing one that's wounded with it even if it's just a little nick once the oni are defeated the poison is rendered useless and yeah it's not effective anymore so now that we have their powers out the way let's get into their weaknesses so one of their weaknesses is sunlight the oni cannot appear during the daytime when the sun is out when hit by the sun's rays they just disappear into smoke they are also weak to mountain ash although to a certain extent the oni are able to be trapped with mountain ash but after a while they search for the weak points and break through as seen when they were breaking through the mountain ash to get inside scott mccall's house they are also weak to silver, which is their biggest weakness in my opinion, because Chris Argent shot an Oni in the face with a silver bullet and it shattered its mask. Later, well, many, many years later, Alice and Argent shot an Oni with a silver arrow. Only this time, it stayed in the host and the Oni was killed. So yeah, now that we have the Oni out the way, let's get into the Ghost Riders, AKA the Wild Hunt. So. The Ghost Riders, also known as the Wild Hunt, are an unknown species of creature that was first mentioned in Season 5 Part 1 of Teen Wolf, and they are first introduced in the first half of MTV Teen Wolf's final season, which is also known as Season 6 Part 1. 
for those of you guys who didn't know who are watching this video now we're getting into, now we're going to get into the powers and in my opinion they have way more powers than the oni now does this mean necessarily that they're going to beat the oni in this video probably not but just throwing it out there they have way more powers than the oni so this is probably going to be an extended part of the video because there's a lot of depth that goes into their powers and abilities so yeah let's just get into them so the o the ghost riders possess super strength as evidenced by the fact that one easily ripped the passenger door off of the Turner's family's car and another was shown to effortless, effortless, effortlessly manhandle both Liam Dunbar and Corey Bryant at the same time. Corey's not really anything too special to brag about because he's really weak, but Liam is pretty impressive because he's, in my opinion, one of the strongest betas we've seen in Teen Wolf. Even, exceptional, even exceptionally strong shapeshifters such as Scott McCall, Malia Tate, and Peter Hell have been unable to do anything more than simply hold their own against the Riders for brief moments of time before being overpowered. So the Ghost Riders' physical strength is no joke. They've taken uh, blows and they've pretty much bodied and uh, made true alpha Scott look like a bitch. Uh, Malia looked like a bitch as well and mind you this is a Malia Tate that's way more powerful than she was in any of the other seasons because she had um, absorbed the rest of her mother's power using Belasco's claws and Peter this is a post alpha Peter post season 4 Peter who's kind of way past his prime so I'm not gonna really say that defeating Peter is too much of a big feat because he's kind of weak in the later seasons but yeah still a feat nonetheless. They also have the ability to grant powers. The Ghost Riders have the ability to turn humans and other supernatural creatures into more of their own kind by swarming around their target and laying their hands on them, allowing them uh, to hollow out their soul and transforming their bodies into that of an undead Ghost Rider. This power was used by the Ghost Riders to turn Garrett Douglas, who was a Lowen Minch with the power of the Ghost Riders and enhanced by the Dread Doctor Serum into one of their own in ret retribution for his attempts to control them and force them to do his bidding. They also have the ability to reality warp. The Ghost Riders possess a rare ability that, ha that has never before been seen in the series until their introduction, the ability to, manip to manipulate reality, which also uh, allows them to erase people from existence as well using their guns and their whips. Uh, specifically how others perceive reality the ghost riders have used this power in a variety of ways including the following existence erasure which i just mentioned they have the power they have the power to erase people from existence using their guns well more so their bullets really have the power to erase people from existence but they use their guns as their primary weapon along with their whip they have memory manipulation once a person is erased from existence all memories of that person from their family their peers their friends whatever everybody who basically knew them throughout their lifetime cease to exist and the only way to remember the person that was erased from, erased from existence is uh finding clues that were left behind by the ghost riders although few and far between uh, they also have matter manipulation in erasing a person from existence. The ghost riders can manipulate objects. This includes changing photographs to remove their victims, likeness from them, and altering documents such as deeds to houses or yearbook, yearbook forms to erase information about the victim, making their bedrooms, homes, or apartments look as though they have been abandoned for an unknown amount of time. This appears to be through the form of illusion casting, kind of falls into what I said before. They also have the ability of dimensional shifting and the Ghost Riders exist on a different plane of reality that is known to most Teen Wolf fans as the Phantom Train Station, but they are capable of manifesting in the real world as well. However, because they are not of the real world, they seem to have a foot on each plane, allowing them to transport themselves back and forth through each dimension, along with other objects and people. And this power gives them the power to make themselves and other people and objects invisible, invisible to the naked human eye, while in the real world, suggesting that this power is a form of projection. So I think that's super cool as well. They also have the power of visual connection. The Ghost Riders have the ability to target individuals who have seen them and 
it allows them to locate these victims, capture them, and erase them from existence at a later time. They also have electro electromagnetic kinesis. The Ghost Riders appear to have the ability to manipulate an electromagnetic energy, as evidenced by the fact that phones are unable to geolocate when they're in the vicinity and their presence prevents compasses from being able to accurately point north. Instead, the compass leads to their location, which I think is a super dope ability as well. Not useful for the fight, still a, still a dope ability nonetheless. They also have Atmokinesis, which allows the Ghost Riders to have a limited ability to control the weather, allowing them to create thunderstorms, lightning bolts, and powerful gusts of wind to their location, which is super dope as well. They have also Atmokinetic Teleportation, which allows the Ghost Riders to teleport using the lightning that is caused by their thunderstorm. So as long as there's lightning in the area and there's a thunderstorm and they're above ground, they can teleport wherever they want using lightning, which is also awesome. They also have telekinesis and the Ghost Riders seem to have the ability to move objects around through sheer force of will. This was demonstrated when the outlaw opened the school doors with a simple hand gesture. However, the Ghost Riders typically rely more on their superhuman strength rather than this power. They also have pathokinesis, which allows the Ghost Riders to manipulate the emotions of others. Not really a useful ability for the fight as well, just thought I'd point that out there. They also have telepathic communication, which is not, which is another ability that's not useful for this fight. Also thought I should just point that out there, just for people who want to know generally. So. The Ghost Riders actually have a few weaknesses as well, and I think their weaknesses can be exploited more than the Oni because I think their, their weaknesses are worse, and that's what's going to lead into who I would think win this fight. So their weaknesses include they can be killed by their own weapons, such as their reality erasing guns, and they can be can, they can be killed through conventional means as well, such as when Theo Raken stabbed one of the Ghost Riders with a bone with a bone saw through its neck, and they can be stopped by going by people going underground, and they can also be stopped by Mountain Ash. Although I'm not really sure the Mountain Ash is really that big of a deal for the Ghost Riders because they can just teleport through it. So yeah, that's the Ghost Riders' weakness in a nutshell. Now, who do I think would win the fight? Honestly, I'm going to give it to the Oni, and here's my reasoning why. The Oni have a less conventional uh, way of being taken out than the Ghost Riders do, and we've seen time and time again, especially later on in Team Wolf Season 6 Part 1, that the Ghost Riders can be taken out through conventional through conventional means and if one such as Liam Dunbar when he got a hold of the Ghost Riders own gun in season six episode nine I recall might be a different episode let me know if I'm wrong down in the comments they can be taken out by their own weapons such as their guns and be killed and that's not really a good look for the Ghost Riders and also creatures stronger than them such as the Loa Mint with Garrett Douglas were easily able to kill ghost riders without that much effort through sheer force of raw strength and just biting through their brain and eating their pineal glands so they can be killed by that as well which adds to my argument of them being killed through conventional means so basically if you just really uh use um multiple different ways such as like maybe swords guns uh well not really actual guns but like their own guns against them and stuff like that and basically uh you know get creative with how you want to kill them the ghost riders can be taken out fairly easy as well also i believe if the oni lead the ghost riders underground the ghost riders are screwed as well because this nullifies their ability to uh, uh teleport since lightning can't be shot through the ground underneath the uh surface into sewers and areas like that so if the ghost riders are led underground by the Oni, they are royally screwed as well. And the Oni seem to get through Mountain Ash pretty easily, I'd say about on par with the Wild Hunt as well. So yeah, so, and also the biggest factor to contributing to why I think the Oni would win, if the Oni are able to slash and kill well, not necessarily kill, but slash and mark the Ghost Riders with their poison. I think that the Ghost Riders poison would kill 
No, not the Ghost Riders poison, my fault. The only poison from their swords would kill the Ghost Riders over time, as mentioned when I mentioned all the stuff with the Oni before. So the Oni, I think, just have a lot more on their in their favor to win this fight. So that's really my reasoning for why they would win. Also, uh, my reasoning for why the Ghost Riders would lose, it's really just through the fact that they can be killed super easily as we've seen multiple times throughout season six, part one, and the Oni in general are just a lot harder to take out, like a lot harder. And they went undefeated throughout pretty much the entirety of season three B. And their only known weakness is silver. And that's the only way we know that can kill them aside from them fighting in the daytime, which they can't do anyway. But we're assuming this fight's gonna take place at night. So yeah. Um, that's who I think would win. The Oni takes this fight and the Oni wins this episode of Fantasy Fights. But let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Do you think the Wild Hunt wins or the Oni wins? Let me know all that fun stuff. Make sure you guys leave a like. Helps out this video get to more people. Also, check out the uh, Fantasy Fights playlist where I have done 17 other matchups so far. This is episode 18 of Fantasy Fights. So if you want to go check out that match, that, uh, those videos i will leave a card probably at the start of this video you probably have already seen it by now so yeah go check out those videos also subscribe to the channel if you are new and you enjoy these videos and you want to see more also turn on post notifications so that you're notified every single week when i post a new fantasy fights video and without further ado i'm jay corner i'm going to get out of here make sure you guys have a great rest of your day peace love and positivity as always Make sure you keep up to date with my novel series, True Alpha, that releases June 5th, along with a guidebook to help you get introduced to the universe. And I'm out this thing. Peace.